All right, welcome to our latest tutorial on how to use Mission Planner. Um, it's been quite a few years since I've made one of these, so it's going to be good to make some updates. There's a lot of new things that have come out uh, since I made the last tutorial series. And so we're going to start off one of these with uh, one of those new advancements in Ardu Pilot, which is VTOL capability. So I'm going to go over how to make a flight plan for a VTOL. So in conjunction with Mission Planner, I'm going to show you how to use Kitty Hawk checklists. So I publish uh, flight planning checklists, pre-flight checklists, maintenance checklists, all kinds of things uh, on Kitty Hawk that you'll be able to use to make sure that you don't miss any steps and run into any problems because with a VTOL there are some mistakes you can make that will end your day uh, very quickly in very spectacular fashion. So um, let's get started. I'm also going to try to make these a little bit shorter than the last series so they're a little bit easier to uh, digest and we'll, we'll come out with more of them. So first of all in Kitty Hawk we're going to click the add button down here on the bottom and then we're going to go to log checklist. Now I have pre-populated the checklists here that I use but if you click add in the upper right hand corner uh, you can make your own checklists and then if you go into the web interface uh, which maybe I'll make a video about later you can look up pre-made checklists that are made by other people and you can uh, add those. So I'm going to click the Lin Aero VTOL flight planning checklist down here we're going to use this. So item one, set home point to desired location. This isn't a new thing uh, with VTOLs, but uh, we're going to start off with it. So right now our home point is at zero, zero. You see there out in the middle of the ocean. And uh, for my purposes, I'm going to make uh, a flight plan over here. OK, so we're going to fly this field. Um, to set the home location, I'm just going to right click here and I'm going to click set home here. And there we have it. Our home location is set. Our altitude above sea level is set. So we're good to go. We're going to go back to Kitty Hawk. We're going to check that. Click next. Set waypoint type. Terrain or relative. Um, for, for this flight, I'm going to use terrain. You can use either one depending on what situation uh, you're working in. Just a few things you need to know. If you're going to use terrain, uh, you need to make sure that the terrain data is available. So prefetching that map, if you're not going to have internet connection when you go to the field, prefetching that map is critical here because the aircraft is going to download that terrain data in the field. Um, and then if you do relative, that's fine. You just need to make sure that there's not terrain that's high enough or towers or anything like that that you're going to fly into it. For example, right here, there's a water tower uh, that's, I don't know, probably a total elevation of about 50 to 60 meters above my home point. So that's a concerning height obstacle to, to keep in mind. So. I'm going to use terrain, but you could use relative depending on, on what you want to do. I use relative if I'm flying over a pretty flat area because it is a little more efficient to just cruise at the same altitude. So we'll check that, go to the next, and then this is where things start to get different. Create VTOL takeoff. So this is important. You do not use the takeoff command uh, like you used in with a fixed wing. So we need to specifically, so we don't want to use this. We need to use a different command called VTOL takeoff. Um, now I can click this takeoff button and set my takeoff altitude. Um, I'm going to set this to 30. That's generally a good altitude and then pitch is not going to matter so I can click OK. And then down here I have a takeoff. Now what I need to do is change this from takeoff to VTOL takeoff and then I can set this pitch angle to zero and we're good to go. In terms of altitude I usually use 30 unless I'm taking off from like in a forest where I really need to get above it. I usually want to be about 30 meters above the obstacles 
that are in the direction that I'm flying away. So here 30 meters works because I can oh, move my home point. Uh, 30 meters works because I can take off in, in this direction, which is going uphill, but not, not aggressively so. So we'll check that and we'll go to the next and now create a climb out waypoint. So this is a lot like um, what we do in a in a fixed wing, a standard fixed wing flight plan where after the takeoff we want to continue climbing. We just don't want to climb as aggressively as we were leaving the takeoff command, you know, maybe at 30 degrees. So here we don't want to climb to 60 meters in VTOL mode because we're going to burn a lot of battery doing that. So we're going to climb to 30 and then I'm going to fly out this direction. So I'm just going to click and create a waypoint that's going to climb me to 60 meters here. And uh, so we can see the angles 18. That's a little steep. So I'll move this out a little bit farther. 15 degree climb from our VTOL takeoff. So that's pretty good. We can, we can manage that. So we'll check that. Go to the next one. Create polygon of area to be mapped. So this is exactly the same as with a uh, standard fixed wing or a uh, uh, quadcopter or anything like that in Mission Planner. We're going to make our polygon. by And we're, we're clicking this Create Polygon button in the upper left. So we've done that. Now we're going to right click, we're going to come down to Auto Waypoint and Survey Grid. You can use V2, I just don't like it, it doesn't give you as many capabilities as Survey Grid. Uh, flight Speed, we're going to set to 18. Um, as with the fixed wing, this is not actually going to change the speed of the aircraft, it's just going to make this estimate down here more accurate. Um, set flight altitude to the desired altitude. I'll leave it at 100 for for this case. It doesn't really matter. This is just a test. Um, select the appropriate sensor. So this is important. Um, in this case I'm going to say that I'm using an A6000. Uh, the default A6000 setting is with a 20 millimeter lens. Um, and I'm going to click this advanced options checkbox like we've done for fixed wing and click over to camera config and so I can see this is 20 if for example I'm using the 16 millimeter pancake lens I can change that to 16 and then save it to a6000 with 16 millimeter so now that shows up as an option and it's saved for later overlap and side lap this is really important um, overlap I'm going to set to 80 that's going to control the triggering rate of the camera uh, side lap I'm going to set to 50 um, sometimes I'll leave it at 60 if there's if there's significant vegetation having a little bit more side lap uh, will, will help also if there's some rolling hills or something uh, 60 will ensure that you have good overlap between your lines um, that you may not otherwise have so we'll click next. We're going to uncheck add takeoff and land waypoints. That's back under simple. And uh, we don't want to do that or use RTL because remember we're putting in our own takeoff and land waypoints. Going to the next one, we're going to make sure use speed for this mission is unchecked. And for the VTOL, uh, this is with the standard LiPo battery. We're going to make sure that our distance here is less than 60 kilometers. It is, uh, in this case, distance is four kilometers, so we're good to go. Um, 60 is gonna be the maximum. If we have the version with the dual lithium ion, lithium polymer battery, then we're, our capability is more in the 75 to 80 kilometer range. So we'll check that. And a, a note that I've put in here on this checklist is that if you have a windy day or a lot of terrain or something like that, you're not going to be able to cover 60 kilometers. The bat, you're going to be less efficient. You're not going to be able to fly as long or as far. So keep that in mind. And you're going to want to monitor your battery throughout. So then once we click accept, which is our next checklist item, it's going to put the grid down. 
And now we need to add our approach waypoints. Um, the other thing we, we need to do is make sure that we, we can climb to waypoint three. This is uh, going to waypoint three. We have a 15, or uh, excuse me, a nine degree climb. That's well within the capability of the aircraft. Um, if this exceeds 20 degrees, we're gonna wanna change this and maybe move waypoint two farther out. The same considerations you have for a fixed wing. But, uh, you know, making sure that this climb is obtainable. If it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's just not going to reach 100 meters by waypoint three. Say it's going to be at 80 meters and then it's going to turn and continue to climb. So not the end of the world, but um, not not ideal. So uh, adding approach waypoints. Uh, this says first at 40 meters above obstacles to establish the aircraft on final and then another at 25 meters above obstacles to transition to VTOL mode. So what this means, and this isn't hard and fast, but the important thing is that it's gonna, the aircraft is gonna transition into vertical mode at the final waypoint before the VTOL land command. So um, this means that we don't wanna put, we, we don't wanna just have it, have the mission end here and then have a VTOL land here because it's going to transition into VTOL mode way over here at 100 meters and then it's going to VTOL its way all the way across probably run out of battery and crash that's not a good deal or fail safe and land somewhere out in this field actually but so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a waypoint and turn off polygon mode and I'm going to add a waypoint right here and I'm going to change this to 30 meters. Now, I know this deviates a little bit from, from what I've got on this list. Uh, there's some trees here that are probably 15 meters tall. I'm going between them, but I still want to be above them. So I'm going to leave, I'm just going to make this at 30 meters. And then when it reaches this waypoint, it's going to transition into vertical flight mode. And then I'm going to add uh, a landing waypoint here and I'm going to put it where I want to land right back on home I'm going to set it to zero and I'm going to change the mode from land to VTOL land again this is very important so again I'm getting a little ahead of myself on the checklist but our next one next item is add landing waypoint so we've got our approach established, so we're flying in in a straight line. Um, I don't want it to really be turning here. So if I was coming from this direction, I would put another waypoint maybe out where two is so it can turn and then come straight in because I don't really like to be doing sharp turns 30 meters above the ground. It's just, you know, the, there's not a lot of safety margin there. So we've got a nice straight in approach. This is at 30 meters. Um, and then we have our VTOL land at zero, and we want this to be 125-ish meters from the final waypoint. The reason this is important, if it's more than that, then it's gonna fly longer in VTOL mode and burn more battery, potentially consume its battery. Um, and if it's closer than that, then it's gonna be traveling too fast when it reaches the landing point and it's gonna to have to brake really hard and it's kind of a, an unstable approach. So I'm gonna move this waypoint in and we see uh, right here, this distance is now 86.5 meters from the last waypoint. So I'm gonna move this back out some, 106. And there's 128 that's good enough so we'll leave it there and we'll check that go to the next one prefetch the base map so uh, this is important to remember um, just like with fixed wing I'm gonna press alt and hold alt down and then click and drag to, to create my box I'm gonna go to map tool prefetch and I'm gonna prefetch this to 16. I don't ever prefetch to 20 because you don't need that degree of zoom. So I'm gonna check 
go to the next item and it says we're complete. Now one thing that is wrong with this flight plan that wasn't in the checklist um, that I'll, I'll add in there is to check our waypoint radius. This waypoint radius is too small. This is good for a copter but not for a fixed wing. We want this radius to be more like a hundred because that's going to smooth out these turns. Now granted this is a small area for a fixed wing. I would not generally use a fixed wing to fly this so that's why these radii are so big. But um, you're going to want that to be around a hundred so that it's able to smoothly turn through uh, the ends of these flight lines. Um, okay so that's it. We have a flight plan that is ready to load onto the aircraft and in the next video I will show you guys just how to uh, load that on, verify it, and fly it. Thanks.